Good morning, boys and girls. We are on unit four, week two, day two of comprehension with our story tripping over the lunch lady. So we're going to get started reading. Um, like I said, our story stripping over the lunch lady, our question of the week is how do people overcome obstacles? The genre of our story is realistic fiction. And realistic fiction deals with characters and actions that seem real, but come from the author's imagination, sometimes in a humorous or funny way. As you read, notice how the author intakes the setting and humorous characters come to life. So let's go ahead and get started reading. Never going to be a gymnast. You know how people say that some folks can't walk or chew gum at the same time? Oh yeah, they were talking about me. I fall downstairs and roll out of bed onto the floor. I drop things on my toes and get trapped in closets. I've broken my arm making cookies. Don't ask. I even got locked in my own locker once. I wanted to see what it was like inside and had to stay there till the end of the school day for the janitor to come and let me out. Do you know how embarrassing it is to be caught in a locker? Just ask me. I'm especially not good with my feet off the ground. I was telling Mr. and Mr. just that about the time I went flying off the trampoline over Tony Friedman's head yesterday and scared him so bad. He wasn't spotting for me, but was talking to Gus Jackson about what they were going to do after school, that he choked on some gum he wasn't supposed to have in his mouth. Right around the time he was having to do the Heimlich done on him and Gus was screaming to apply direct pressure. Luckily, we'd had a first aid class the period before gym. I realized that what everybody calls me is probably true. Jinx. That's how everyone refers to me. My own parents even. Mom thinks it's cute. My uncle Jeff began calling me Jinx when I started crawling backward as a baby and getting stuck in boxes, under tables, and even the story goes, a pair of my dad's boots. So who is Jinx in this story? Do you know? We can probably tell from the picture that it looks like it's this girl with her feet off the ground, right? And Jinx looks like she's going to be our main character in this story. So when you read, we found some details um, that could help us make a generalization about Jinx. So what generalization could you make about Jinx using details from this page? That's right, there are multiple details to support the generalization that Jinx is always having accidents. That's an awesome generalization. Let's go ahead and flip to the next page. Dad pats me on the head like an old skunky stray and says, Uncle Jeff was just like me. Yeah, right. Uncle Jeff drives a Porsche and lives in a cabin in the woods with a hot tub. I'm too uncoordinated to ever drive a car, and I'm pretty sure a hot tub is just a bad accident waiting to happen. I love Uncle Jeff anyway, though. I guess he might have been a jinx back in the day, but hey, he must have grown out of it, which doesn't necessarily mean that I will. I'm never going to be able to keep my feet together and fly perfectly on the trampoline. I'm never going to be able to make a basket without breaking somebody's bones. The doctors did do a good job on Mr. D. Meister's nose though. I'm never going to run like my sister or kick soccer ball like my brother without falling, throwing up, or pulling a muscle on me or somebody else. My dad won't even let me use a steak knife. I still have to cut meat with one of those plastic picnic things that sort of look like a knife. But a while ago, everything changed. My whole life, even because of something I saw on the Folk Arts channel. A couple days after that, a picture in an album made me feel exactly right about it. So from what I read about Jinx so far, I don't know that square dancing will go so well for her, but uh, let's see. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people I've run over, stepped on, and tripped up, I'm going to be a square dancing star. The dancers on television floated over the floor, arm in arm. They smiled, laughed, and nobody fell into anybody else or sprained anything. They were all so happy and even seemed to really like each other. And then I saw this woman who looked just like my mom. She could have been my mom. She looked so much like her. Then in the middle of a swing around, she looked at the camera in the eye and she smiled at me. Honest, it was as if she looked right at me to say, you could be me. And look, I can do this. 
wow. It was a couple of days later when a picture fell out of a photo album I just dropped in the fish tank. I rescued everything pretty quick, except now our goldfish hide when I come close to the tank. But there in living color was a picture of my mom arm in arm with this kid with hair way down his back, square dancing. It was in my jeans. I knew it was meant to be. So what does Jinx think about square dancing? That's right, guys. She thinks that she's going to be able to do it awesome. She thinks that it is in her genes. Why does she think that she's going to become a square dancing star? Right, again, she thinks it's in her genes, and she thinks that this woman on TV who looks exactly like her mom is sending her a message and telling her that it is meant to be, and she could be an awesome square dancer. All right, this is the last page that we're gonna read today, so let's get started. And not only am I going to be a star, I'm going to be the fifth grade school gym square dance champ of the whole world, and nobody's going to stop me. Ouch. It's a hard thing to change people's minds about how things are done and to get them to do something new. This is how it went with Mr. D. Meister. When I went to his office and told him what might be the most wonderful thing since knee pads and bandages. What? He said, sort of backing away from me like he always does. Guys, why would someone back away from me? If they're scared, right? Why would Mr. D. Meister be scared of Jinx? That's right, guys, if you remember a few pages ago, she had an accident and actually broke his nose. So um, what conclusion could you draw if Mr. Meister is backing away from Jinx? What conclusion could we draw? He might be scared that he's gonna get hurt by her, right? Let's keep reading. Square dancing, Mr. Meister. square dancing. It's fun and it's good exercise for everybody. I saw it on the Folk Arts channel and practiced with a huge stuffed teddy bear. What? It was real cool the way the guy swung the girls and everybody skipped and twirled around the room. I think it would be good for us to all learn a new skill, learn to dance with partners, because usually the boys don't want to, and get a good workout. What? We wouldn't have to wear the frilly dresses or bow ties like they did on TV. I think our regular gym clothes would be okay. Do you think that we have square dance music in the band room? What? I think a few more meetings with Mr. D. Meister will get him to come around to the square dance way. So later that day, I dropped off some square dance music at his office. He wasn't there and I accidentally dropped a 10 pound weight. I was moving off his desk onto a fishing pole that fell onto the floor. There was a stuffed fish on his desk. Scary. So why might Jinx be so excited about having a square dancing class? That's right, guys, if you saw earlier in the story, she struggled in gym, right? She had so many accidents in gym. She says she um, has accidents all the time. She either hurts herself or other people. So she thinks that square dancing is going to give her a chance to finally be good at something. All righty. So right under this, you are going to have a short um, question to answer. You are going to say, what prediction can you make about what is going to happen next in the story? So based on what we read, you're going to predict what is going to happen next and what we will read tomorrow. Remember to fill out those predictions and complete all of your Schoology assignments, and I cannot wait to see you back here tomorrow.